Welcome, friends. Today, we are doing another first impressions video. Outrageous. That's right, friends. Once again, I have returned to you with another first impressions video, this time on the house of East Uzak. We are continuing our sampling of the house of East Uzak. This is the second in the line. This is the second in my playlist. Uh, this is another four. I don't think I've got the whole line, but these are the ones I have got, and that's all you can do, really, isn't it? So today we have, what do we have? We have Theros. We have, what else do we have? Silex. We have Ambra Bleu, and we have a Pohadka. So that will be fun. <clears throat> First up, Theros. Theros, Theros. Now, I am going to think that these are different samples. This is from a different line because they're in different sample vials. So we will see, won't we? Theros. When were you released, Theros? 2017. The perfumer is, of course, Vicente Micotti. Oh, I'm pronouncing that correctly. Wow, that's discolored the uh, the blotter there. This is apparently an amber fragrance. I will read you the blurb. Excuse me. Theros is composed based on a large dose of genuine oud oil from Vietnam and Laos, yet it is not the sort of oud notes you have experienced from the mainstream creations. Vicente or Vicent, Vinch, Vincent Micotti was commissioned by M. Theodore... Right, brace yourselves. M. Degree Theodore Currensis to create a romantic scenery of a summer. The smell of sun-heated sand, the tender skin under the sun, the sea and the sky. The natural oud, especially from Chiara, has as itself has its beaut beautiful, velvety and delicate side, which is the main concept of using this precious oil in Theros. Eau de Parfum Concentré comes in a flacon hand decorated with pure silver stain that was produced by a guild according to an 800-year-old recipe, which is authentic method for cathedral stained glass. Corensis' interpretation of summer and hot sand is represented in every part you see, you touch, you smell, and you hear. To recall these sensations, we made the hand-painted cap and the hand-painted label remind the hot sand. The flacon itself is contained in a mock-burnt charcoal with faintly brushed gold stripes, a symbol of heat, burn, and sun, and is throughout and is thought behind this design. 37 suppliers coming from 12 different countries have worked on this project and a total of 257 different steps were necessary to finish this perfume and to accomplish Theodore Corenzi's unique visual concept which participates to the spirit of perfume creation. This perfume is not filtered to allow the entire spectrum of the rare oud and natural oils to shine and develop further their identity. Good grief! Fragrance composition, sun-heated sand, smell of wet skin out of the sea, overheated air, burning stone, sea salt, hot chocolate, hot chocolate, kisses after taste of lipstick, Vietnamese agar wood, patchouli amber, amber seed and true ambergris. The fuck? I'm never reading that again. That was not easy. I get the chocolateiness. Um, I get this kind of slight raspberry... Could be the lipstick, that. Whoa, that was a fucking ordeal. Sorry about that. Christ. Wow. What a blurb. It was a big fuck off blurb. So we got this chocolateiness. I also get this dry. Woody. There's some shitty oud. A little bit of a little bit of shittiness. And then I do mean a little bit, not a lot. Kind of adds to the chocolate, you know. It's got that kind of dark brown. It's changing. It's doing a lot of stuff. It's dry. 
I wonder how much this is. I didn't say this in the last video. I didn't know this in the last video. It's apparently they're like fucking 400 quid for 50 mil or some shit, which is absolutely bonkers. Do not pay that for this. Price is, of course, a massive, massive part of perfume experience, right? This is 425 euro. Right, and apparently it's got all this fucking oud in it, so... I was actually expecting it to be twice the price, if I'm being honest with you, because that's what people usually do. A new perspective on oud. Dark, vibrant, theatrical. Uh, just, I mean, fuck me, man. It's just 425 fucking euros. The thing is, is that people sometimes pay it and they think they can get away with it, you know? Like, you're talking, there's probably about five quids worth of perfume oil in here. It's nice. <clears throat> there's something a little bit biscuity about it, but I could be misconstruing sand, musk, pebbles, skin, stone. I'm going to try this on skin because I don't think the paper's probably not doing it justice. It did stain said uh, paper. It's nice, it smells good, it smells good quality, and it's it's different. Um, there's obviously some kind of chocolate material become available in the last, like, seven years that everybody's just decided to start throwing in in the upper-end perfumes, like Strange Love did it. They're obviously, YS Uzak. I don't know if it's Is Uzak or YS Uzak, or Is Uzak, because Y is a, y is a vowel, so... It's like the, the stray vowel. It's both a vowel and a consonant, isn't it? Or oh, neither. I can't remember. It's special. Anyway. That fucking blurb has put me right off. The fact I could barely fucking read it has upset me. <laughs> I've let myself down there. I shouldn't be taking it out on the brand. Okay, next up. Ooh. Next up, we have Silex. Silex, where are you? Okay. Oh, this has got a nice short little, a nice short little uh, blurb. Thank you. That's just what I need. Okay. <clears throat> Silex is the first part of our new 8Ds collection a perfume that reminds the discovery of a piece of flint hidden in chalk a perfume like a stone it's going to be mineralic isn't it a perfume like a stone tool a perfume of fire a perfume of conquests a new olfactor family was born the minerals was released in 2018 i can assure you my friends that the mineralic and stony and flinty thing had been invented a long time before these people came along oh god Oh, fuck right off. Wow. Oh, that is so, so, so bad. Oh, I fucking hate it. Right, so I don't like the whole mineralic, electric putting your tongue on a battery ozonic stone kind of thing dry it's got some kind of amber wood in there dry flint um oh, that is rotten like it's it's like it's it's like it's got some kind of fresh cut wood kind of thing going on you know, it's made the end of my tongue go numb. I, I don't like this kind of thing. So I'm going to try and describe it for you. And if you like it, then fair enough. But um, please bear in mind that I do not like this kind of fragrance. So it's got like some kind of incense -y Dry smoke. 
kind of flinty, dry stone, dry incense, dry smoke, dry amber woody, gritty, chalky. I get the chalky vibe, absolutely. It smells very modern, like a really modern perfume, you know? Like, you know, that kind of alien, not alien the perfume, but alien, like, from out of this world. Amber woody. I get this amber wood association in here that I really hate, that dark, black, granule, granule particulate smoke. I really don't like this kind of thing. Incensey, like you're bitten into like a fucking massive incense stick of incense, you know? That's what it smells like. Oh God, all fucking mighty. I, nah, I never want to smell that again. <laughs> it's caught the back of my throat, man. That's how dry it is. Feels like it's dried out me fucking wet darts. You know, like your mouth and your throat and your tongue. Hey, cabron. That is absolutely fucking rotten. I really hate that kind of thing. Um, and if I never smell that again, it'll be too soon. That has brought out quite the fucking reaction in me that I just need a minute. Whew, it's a shame I don't edit me videos because I could fucking take a minute, but I can't. I have to crack on. Um, for better or for worse. Good God. Oh, shit. That is horrific. Like, if you could make a fragrance that I really wouldn't like, I mean, like, that would be it. Do you like my little stigmata that I've developed on the back of my hand? I have no idea where that's come from. I just started fucking bleeding yesterday. I was like, what the fuck? Anyway, what do we have here? Ambra Bleu. Oh, God. I wonder what this is like. Oh, the blurb on this is a bit massive as well. Was released in 2018. Again, the perfumer is Mr. McCotty. Oh, this has stained the paper too. My Lord above. Help. For centuries, real ambergris was favoured by emperors. Its suave smell reminded them the extent of their territories and the total control they had over the vast oceans. This incredible and unique scent, symbol of some dragon, whale or supernatural giant only few ever saw was the pride of every court. Today, still, real ambergris belongs to the few mythical, mystical ingredients that may be used in perfume. No single lump or fragment smells like another, and the amount of time that pieces float over the oceans before reaching the shores will dramatically change their colour, density and smell. Highly coveted spices and resins such as frankincense and myrrh represented an important part of ancient ceremonies and events in form of fragrant smoke, ablutions, or even in various dishes and drinks. United in, into ambre bleu, they form the symbol of the extent of the empires, the reminder of the control of oceans and the intoxicating spicy memories of southern lands. Those are the real tribute to the emperor's dreams. Well, what's it smell like? Right, it's got this kind of animalic... No, sorry, that's not true. It's got this kind of mineralic... Metal... Metallic... Thing going on. Um, slightly peppery. It's got a blueness to it. I get that. I don't like this either. I don't like this. I don't hate it as much as I hate the previous one, which is just essentially melted me eyeballs. But bollocks, we don't need eyeballs to smell.
This one's got something a bit more musky about it, a little bit more spicy too, you know? Fresher. It's got mineralic sort of stuff going on. Um, <clears throat> bitterness. Something a little bit, not latex, but like, what's the word? What is the word? Rubbery? Yes. It's a little bit more spicy and like, like a wet resin. You know, like a wesin, a wesin, a resin that hasn't quite yet dried off fully. It's fresh. It's a little bit watery. It's blue. It's got a blueness to it. It's got this kind of freshness. It's very weird. It's got cardamom. Um, this is much more palatable than the previous one. I've, I may have done it a, a disservice when I've said that it's a... Uh, but it's got like some kind of incense, resin, mystical thing going on too. Good grief. Fresh. Maybe a little powdery too. Musky. There's a lot going on there actually. I don't I don't hate that. I don't hate that at all. Ambre bleu. You know, I'll try that on skin. I tried a couple from the last video on skin, but I'll do that in my final impressions video. Excuse me whilst I hydrate. Much needed. Good grief. I feel like I've been cleaned out. Okay. A pohadka. We will see. This one was released in 2011. So this is one of the earlier ones, is it? Um, Hour of Dream, a saraband by air, wind and flame, a mysterious path of sensation under smoky twilight, an unsuspected improvisation between fresh cut grass and slightly powdery blonde tobacco, accentuated by the vivid colour of immortelle, the transparent ever shifting opening implies a secret of sunshine, sketching an aquarelle painted warm sand. The tantalizing yet intangible note of jasmine draws an introduction between crushed fresh herbs and soulful leather undertones of smoked vanilla. I hope it's not a massive jasmine because I'm full of this. Oof. Fruity. I got something a bit fruity. What do we have here? So, Shizo is the top note. Grass, French labdanum, jasmine, artemisia, white tobacco, immortel, leather, sage, liatri, liatris, and vanilla. What is shiso? Member of the mint family. Mm, that makes sense. Yeah, it does have a slightly minty vibe to it, you know. Herbal, green, minty. Fresh. It's got something in it. It could be the Artemisia, because I think Artemisia is related slightly to, um, like, uh, absinthe, isn't it? It's got that in as well. I'm getting a lot of that. It's green. It's fresh. It's floral, but not in a not in a bad way. The jasmine wasn't as massive as what they made out. Um. <coughs> How does white tobacco differ from other sweet smelling opulent floral note? Oh, I'll see. 
it is slightly sweet. It has got some sweetness, that kind of green sweetness that you can get from natural, you know. And then with the Artemisia and this crazy Shiso, it's very different. It's very weird. If you like green, minty vibe, but not distinctly minty. Fresh, green, floral, freshly cut grass. This is nice. I like this. I do like this. Um, I wonder how much this costs. In fact, I'm going to do that in the final impressions. When I do the final impressions video, I'll talk about the cost of them. <coughs> It's nice, this, and it's good quality. I like the blend, and it's well made. It's interesting. It's different. And it smells very modern. It smells very modern niche, but in a good way, not a bad way. Because that can cut both ways, that. Okay. We will go back over these. Oh, God. Right, Theros. That's definitely got something a little bit hay-like about it now, you know, like dry, desiccatedness, but a little bit sweet as well. It's interesting, but it bloody wants to be for 425 euros for 50 mil. Next up, oh God, do I really want to do this? Silex. That is fucking infinitely better than when I first sprayed it, but... But it's dry and mineralic and, and dry and chalky and, and granular and gritty. Oof. Ambre bleu. Sorry. <laughs> I don't like that now. That's got some kind of weird... Bitter twang kind of... Weirdness, I don't like that. And this, this is nice. I think this would smell nice on a woman. So we will try that. Maybe I'll send it to a woman to try on. Anyway, that is it, my friends. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs>